dia dalam gerakan Islam. Pada model gerakan Islam ketika itu, kalau tengok Abim, ya Abim, Abim baju Melayu sama ada berkopiah atau tidak berkopiah. Kalau tidak berkopiah, tidak. kalau berkopiah pun kopiah putih. Itu Abim. Itu Abim. That is Abim. But Anwar, Anwar tidak masuk dalam kelompok pemaparan Abim sedemikian rupa. Anwar masih lagi kopiah, kopiah hitam. Kalau di subuh pun kopiah hitam. Kalau maghrib pun kopiah hitam. Dalam publik pun kopiah hitam. UMNO President and the Malaysian Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad thought his success in bringing Anwar, the Abim leader to UMNO, would paralyze pass. But after more than 20 years later, he was proven to be wrong. Anwar betrays and after being ousted, found strength in pass and Anwar rises pass into becoming a huge challenge to UMNO and the government. Follow the second chapter, Man of Many Faces. Dr. Mahdi Muhammad, the South Kota Star Member of Parliament, saw the defeat of the Alliance in the 1969 general election, which then led to the bloody May 13 incident as UMNO's internal mistake. The defeat also involved himself, resulting in him protesting and distributing to the public his letter criticizing the style of leadership of the then Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman. The government banned the protest on July 14, 1969, beginning with the sacking of Mahdi from UMNO on July 12, 1969. Although Mahdi was angry with the Chinese that caused his defeat to pass, he looked at it from the aspect of pass having the potential to be dominant in the Malay area. Mahdi was determined to paralyze pass at all costs. His defeat to pass Yusuf Rawa was a very bitter one. After returning to UMNO when Tun Abdul Razak took over the country's leadership, Mahathir was appointed Education Minister, but he continued with the determination to fight PAS. The most effective formula for Mahathir to paralyse PAS was through internal and external elements. When he was appointed Prime Minister, he immediately took action to achieve his objective, despite protests from the party. Mahathir saw Anwar Ibrahim, a student activist with PAS inclination. In 1982, Mahathir shocked the country, surprised PAS, and caused anxiety among UMNO members when he took Anwar Ibrahim, who was critical of UMNO to join the party. But to Mahathir, this was only the first step of his strategy to paralyze PAS. Mahathir easily won Anwar because from intelligence reports from his office, Mahathir knew he was a very ambitious man who wanted power to achieve his Islamic reforms. Mahathir fulfilled his dream. Mahathir also viewed Anwar important to him because of his background in being a champion of Abim, a former ISA detainee and having close relations with several Wahhabi ulamas from the Arab countries and the Egyptian Ikhwanul Muslimin leaders. However, the security who checked on Anwar's background saw the dangers in Mahathir's doing. Anwar will not adapt to Amno. His radicalism would shine when the opportunity came. He will strengthen his position. He will be a threat. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia saw Anwar becoming a more important figure in containing the Iranian revolution from spreading to all Islamic countries in Asia. Pass had accepted the concept of Iran wanting to only make the ulama the country's leader. Saudi Arabia wanted to use Anwar as its Trojan horse. Anwar used Wahhabi, which was supported by Iraq. Anwar no longer saw his future in Pass when Pass set orthodox ulama as the criteria to becoming both Pass and the country's leader. Anwar suka tengok ulama pakai kod, pakai tai, uh, pakai tak pakai songkok pun tak apa and yet he or she can talk well about Islam itu itu saya rasa personality yang Anwar anda because of his personality and um, dia punya thinking ada western influence in him you know Jewish influence whatever in him dia merasakan pas ni second graders lah uh, rasa saya lah ulama-ulama pas ni pun tak standing dengan ulama-ulama kalau tengok yang di di Mesir di mana kan di Kuwait di di Kuwait di Qatar kan Qatar Kuwait orang pakai kod orang pakai tai dan sebagainya uh, this this not reflected you know dalam pas he considered his joining of Amno to be the right move Anwar was quick to adapt himself he was a person who can be anyone to everyone to the Saudis he was an Islamic hardcore and to Amno he was a liberal however behind his effective acting his elopement with Aziza almost threatened his life. His father-in-law, who did not like him, met Abdullah Badawi, an Amno leader, and told him that he would destroy the little bastard, but was calmed down by Abdullah. With loyalty, a fighting spirit, dedication, and at times greed, Aziza, with an attractive character, became Anwar's assistant. One Aziza held firm to the ideology of the Purda, even before she knew Anwar. 
By supporting his rise to being an UMNO Youth Leader and given the post of Culture, Youth and Sports Minister, Mahathir was sending a message to the people that nobody could stop him from destroying past the Islamic Fundamentalist Party. Anwar was the mechanism to his strategy. With Anwar in his grasp, Dr. Mahathir believed he could break two threats against UMNO in one shot, namely Anwar, who would be a danger if outside UMNO, and pass a party of Islamic extremists. Mahathir was confident of Anwar as his protégé and would remain in UMNO to be with him in opposing anything that could be a hindrance to its struggle and aim of putting the Malays on par with the other races and not as second-class citizens in the Malaysian society. Anwar won Mahathir's heart by showing that he had a bigger spirit than Mahathir. If Mahathir was a chauvinist, he was a supremacist. If Mahathir believed that Malays should get the special rights, they would continue to need him. Anwar showed to Mahathir that he wanted the rights to remain with the Malays forever. But there was something that Anwar could not compete with Mahathir. His background as a radical Islamic leader drew the suspicion of other races, compared to Mahathir, who was more open, causing the non-Malays to have more confidence in his sincerity. They were more comfortable with him. Anwar took advantage of Mahathir's confidence in him to smuggle in his friends from Abim into the government and UMNO, comprising those having links with PAS, Islamic fundamentalists, Islamic radicals, as well as those influenced by the Iranian revolution. To not rouse any suspicion from Mahathir, he ordered them to go along with Mahathir, to speak on matters which Mahathir liked, so that Mahathir would not feel threatened by him. With the confidence given by Mahathir to him, Anwar built close ties with banks which had links with Islamic radicals. He went overseas more often. Realising the need for money to rise in UMNO, Anwar began befriending Malay and Chinese millionaires for his political future. Anwar would only distance himself or make enemies of those who were against Mahathir. Mahathir trusted Anwar more and appointed him the Education Minister, a post said to be the bridge to becoming the Prime Minister. When holding the post, Anwar began showing his impatience. He wanted to get support and become popular to strengthen his position. During the short period of becoming Education Minister, Anwar had not only disturbed the system and spirit of the national education policy, but also changed the year and school holidays, as well as ordered the term Basa Malaysia to be changed to Basa Melayu. You will see in the following chapter how he set up his operation towards achieving his goals.